week we talk with author, researcher, and activist Amy Worthington. Amy is one of the first to write about the details of the aerosol operations that were uh, really becoming prominent in the late 90s, sort of before most people became aware of what was going on. Recently, Amy has written two very important, well-researched articles on the physiological hazards of the wireless age, specifically the effects to cellular structure and DNA from cell phone use and being near wireless technology. Her articles, titled Generation X Ray, Child Victims of Technological Abuse, and Microwaves, the Radiation Poisoning of America. The research and and documentation in these studies you won't find or hear about in North America. Uh, The reality is that cell phone users in the U.S. and Canada have not been told the truth about the dangers of wireless radiation. Now, as most are emotionally addicted to cell phones, it could be more difficult to effectively impart this information. There are some eye-opening clues in this interview that Amy relays to Skywatchers. Let's have a listen. Amy, welcome to Skywatch Radio. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be with you. As we've discussed earlier, you were one of the first authors to begin writing articles about the aerosol operation, the weather modification, the related ELF and um, microwave issues. Can you tell us a little bit about how you began and how you started researching and what you were writing about back in the late 90s? Well, you know, I've been a researcher and a journalist for years, but that was certainly not my subject, what was happening in the sky. I was dumb as dirt, like most of us uh, were back in the 90s, until I saw a television program about what happened to the people of Oakville, Washington. Uh, It turns out that in the mid-1990s, the U.S. military began a uh, germ warfare attack against Oakville, Washington, and they uh, were dumping this mucky, gluey stuff full of bacteria and other strange uh, creatures on the people of Oakville, and then they would send uh, monitors, uh, uh, investigators into Oakville to see how they were doing in making these people sick, that really made an impression on me. Of course, in 1997, when I heard this story, we hadn't yet really become aware of the chemtrails. But I I think at that point, I was ready to be aware of anything that was happening in the skies because of the Oakville story. Oh, really? Uh, And what year was that? Well, they started uh, attacking the people of Oakville um, uh, in the mid-90s, I would say about 96. Uh, the, there was an, a program about it on one of the syndicated shows in 1997. And then, of course, the chemtrails began in earnest as far as we were concerned here in the Northwest about 1999, maybe late 1998. And then we began to be very concerned about what we saw then, and of course, it, it's never stopped since. Where did you get information uh, at that time? Because uh, the Internet was sort of just beginning. I mean, there was probably not that much information available at that time. How did you gather inf- information to, to write and put it into your uh, articles? Well, thank goodness we had Clifford Carnicom, you know, and, and Carnicom.com. Uh, I think a lot of people started to become acutely and astutely aware uh, in, in the late 90s, and uh, we just kind of helped one another and, and learned from one another. And then we began to do more and more research, and we realized that they have been actually, when I say they, our, our own government, our own military has been uh, playing with germ warfare, using us as test subjects for germ warfare since the 1950s. But the last 20 years, we've just seen a breathtaking and conspicuous attack upon all living things, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it seems to me that in the last 10 years especially, we have seen four major projects that appear to be designed to kill us, to sicken us, to reduce human population as quickly as possible. Okay, can you uh, maybe run through a couple of those projects and tell us a little bit about it? Oh, sure. Uh, Well, I would say the first and most conspicuous has been the Chemtrail Project, and we know it's for weather modification and for uh, many military applications, and we know they're using toxic uh, metals like barium and and, uh, aluminum and many nanopolymers and all kinds of fibers and strange uh, uh, 
who knows what, uh, genetically engineered uh, things. And, and we know that the Chemtrail Project includes the HEART Project, which is filling our ionosphere with microwaves, which then bounce back to us, to our Earth, as ELF, or extremely low frequencies. And, and they're using all of these techniques to steer weather systems and to, uh, probably to cause earthquakes and so on. Uh, the second project seems to be these fake terrorist attacks, uh, like Oklahoma City uh, and 9-11, and of course, which are just excuses to unleash this vicious police state that we seem to be growing. And then the germ warfare project, of course, is on everyone's mind. That would be the third project, and that would include these genetically engineered organisms like the mycoplasmas behind uh, chronic fatigue, and these machines like Morgellons that uh, they're seeding into the atmosphere. Obviously, all of this is intended to weaken and sicken and disable the general population, and maybe even to terrify us. I, I think... That's true. And, and why do you think they just don't outright kill people? How come it's a slow process? Uh, I don't know. I, I, it's really food for thought. I, I think if they were too conspicuous about, about the killing process, I think probably more people would, would be aware and would awaken. They, they want to keep the majority of people not informed, let's put it that way. So I think they have to be a little bit careful how they do this, but they're just as effective at, at doing a, a slow kill. And that brings me to the fourth pillar of, of their project, and that would be the wireless revolution. Uh, I think probably that is the most pernicious part of their project. And if this is all human uh, engendered, uh, so be it. But I, I always think in the back of my mind that so much of this is demon-driven. Well, that's interesting, based on the idea that humans wouldn't do this to each other. I think they would do this to each other, but I think they would do so only uh, under, under duress of uh, evil realms, perhaps, um, where they have sold their souls, or, or maybe 99% of the people involved in, in these projects don't even know the whole picture. They just have, each have their own little slot and they each have their own little part, and they, they themselves don't see the larger picture. But the wireless revolution is, is, as I say, it's the most pernicious and covert part of the project because uh, it, we can't see, hear, taste, or smell the radiation that's being used to weaken us. Uh, they're using this pulsed ELF-embedded microwave radiation. 